So right off the bat, opening scene of this miniseries that released on 12-14, the date of Sandy Hook. We see the two jumbo jets flying into lower Manhattan, which is just behind here. This is the Freedom Tower. This is the Brooklyn Bridge. And the two jets drop down into, this is lower Manhattan here, and this is just beneath the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, here is the actual... Google Earth image, same image. Here's the Freedom Tower, Brooklyn Bridge, Lower Manhattan is over here, and the World Trade Center towers were just below here. Now, these are the numerological synchronicities that most people overlook. This man died at age 66, and it was 11 years before, 11 years before this is set, which is 2016 is when this is set. So we have 11 years and 66. That's 9-11 backwards. It's also the Hebrew year 5761 that the World Trade Center fell. But basically, all of the pictures of loved ones go blank as they announce the reason why they're there. So they come back as loved ones, basically like ghosts. And they say, we're here to wipe away every tear from your eye and to bring about justice in the world and peace and security. Okay, so this is all of biblical proportion. This is everything that we read in the Bible about the last days. Now, I thought it was interesting they put here showcase. So in going along the 9-11 theme, we see the first contact with this man as they ask him to come with him and they disassociate his house into particles. Particle disassociation. Piece by piece. And then they put it back together when he agrees to go with them. So again, we have 9-11 themes as the World Trade Center was turned completely to dust. So the aliens help bring about what is termed in the series a golden age. But what in fact they're depicting is their plans. A golden age on earth created by an earthly kingdom. But as the Bible tells us, that kingdom will be brought to ruin and the rock, the true kingdom of heaven will come. They will promise peace and security. They will promise all these things. And when they say that, the end will come. So the overlords wait 50 years to reveal themselves. And it, during that time, there is a true golden age. But it's interesting because they don't actually tell you how the problems are solved. Other than giving the overlords divine power to like heal the dead and things like that. And provide this era of youthfulness in which people don't grow old. And of course, we know that only God has that power. But they present it as if that evil also holds the power for such miracles, and that's simply not the case. It's all illusions, illusions of power. But we have been given the power to tread on serpents, it says in the Bible. And as the overlords dock to reveal themselves for who they really are after the 50 years. We get the phallic and vaginal imagery, as you can see here, very overt. And I believe that what this segment visualizes is the mixing of the two races, the serpent seed and the human DNA. The Bible said, do not sacrifice your children to Molech in the fire, but yet, the overlord asks for two children to greet him, and it's as if they go into a fire. Watch. The child greeters that Corellin asked for are now entering the arrival ground. Children, 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 it is because we have been deceived. They have set up the infrastructure for failure, plain and simple. And they have created the chaos from which they can derive order. And that is the enemy's stated goal. Tear it all down so he can build it back up in his image. But God has different plans. So in part two of the three-part series... The overlords send this Ouija board type device. And as you can see, it's inside like of an eye. It's like the iris of the eye. And then 
they come down and they basically take over this boy who's living with his parents. And the boy says that he actually visits hell. And in hell, he sees the eye. Now, what I think he's describing is the evil eye. We've talked a lot about the evil and good eye on this channel. And Jesus says, if your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. We talked about all the other eye references in the Bible. A person complaining about a speck in a person's eye when they have a log in their eye. All these eye references we have. It's because Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I believe the good and the evil is our two eyes. One, one eye of good, one eye of evil. We are ruled by Saturn. And I believe that's what they were depicting in the boy's description of hell. Of the giant eye that he saw amongst the fire and brimstone and darkness. And the script is full of accusations against God that go unresolved, unexplained. Just questions raised. Like, in one part they say that God created disease. And then when we find a cure, he creates a new disease. And that is simply untrue. Sin entered the world through the serpent. And all sin is ascribed to him. All sin, all death, the wages of sin is death. That is why we die, grow sick, and grow old. But with perfect faith, we know that this life is but a speck. It is but a blink of an eye to eternity. And all we must do is live through this life and make the right choices to gain our treasure in heaven. Now, what you'll notice if you've seen the series is the repeating rectangular reference. And this isn't a joke, you guys. Like the evil um, overlords first show themselves, reveal themselves in this rectangular pattern as I was showing you, this rectangular door-shaped thing. And um, before the children come in and, and escort the overlord out of this thing, and it looks like the children are being sacrificed in the fire, literally. But this rectangular theme persists and this rung a bell for me because in ipad goat 2 we saw the rectangles we saw the antichrist coming up out of the rectangles and of course this is all about the antichrist this is all about satan's form of a utopia on this earth and offering technology to solve the world's problems instead of spirituality and submission to the true and only god so i'm looking at this and i'm like okay this is weird. I've seen this before. So I pop on here, and they actually sing the song Itsy Bitsy Spider. Now, this is going to creep some people out because I grew up on this nursery rhyme. And you form your fingers into this rectangle. And it's all about a spider who, who goes up the water spout. The rain comes down, washes it out. The sun comes up, dries up the rain, and the spider goes right back up the water spout. And what I realized, and this was an epiphany, and I don't know if anyone's discovered this yet, but this is the golden rectangle that you're forming with your fingers. And this is actually the Fibonacci, part of the Fibonacci sequence. In other words, when you remove a square from this equation, it forms another uh, f a golden rectangle. So it's an infinite, an infinite loop is what it is, as you can see here. Um, and it'll, it actually even says here, when one, one square is removed, uh, the golden another golden rectangle is created and this just keeps going on and on forever and ever this is the fibonacci sequence and you can see it on display letterbox display uh, many of our aspect ratios that we have when we look through our crystal ball televisions is in fact in the fibonacci uh, golden rectangle shape okay it's actually aesthetically pleasing, according to Wikipedia here. Uh, for some reason, it resonates with us. It's another level of the sorcery uh, to get us on all different levels. Um, aesthetics, uh, you know, numerology, all of this is incorporated into this shape, the golden rectangle. And I just thought it was interesting that that's linked right into the Itsy Bitsy Spider Um and that kind of that is pretty creepy because that means this stuff goes back all the way to childhood. So, and of course, you see the Fibonacci sequence, the spiral here, and this gift that she gives to her dying husband, who was becomes the prophet. He's the link between the overlords and humans, but he's dying, and so she puts together 
their entire life on these uh, golden rectangle in a Fibonacci sequence uh, for as a gift to him. Now, the miniseries ran for three episodes, three days. And the Prophet character keeps having these visions of being with his ex-girlfriend, who he loved very much, who died like of cancer. And they end up staying in a hotel room for three days. So I thought that was kind of a odd juxtaposition. Uh, many of you have said this might be a reference to the three days of darkness that, that will come upon the earth spoken about in Revelation. And that's definitely possible. Now the overlord says to him, as surely as the sun rises, it must also set. This is the scene where they're locked in or they're, they're in the hotel for three days. And it's called the Four Seasons Hotel. And I thought this was interesting because if you look at Hosea 6.3, it talks about the sun coming and that he will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain watering the earth. Now different versions of this, like in the King James Version, Talk about the latter rain. It says here, so let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. He, His going forth is, is as a certain as the dawn, and he will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain watering the earth, like the latter and the former rain unto the earth, in the King James Version. Uh, so this is all about the coming of Jesus, okay? The former rain was baptism. The latter rain Aquarius in his return, okay, and he will return to us. And this scripture is offering hope. But look at this verse right before Hosea 6 3. So it talks about the third, the three days. This is how we know that the this scripture and the scene are linked together. He will raise up on the third day that we may live before him. So there's your three days. So this is like a prophecy pointing forward to Jesus, it appears. They say, Lord, here. So it's got to be what they're talking about here. Uh, Judah, this is, Jesus came through the line of Judah, line of the tribe of Judah. It was his bloodline. So everything in the film is basically the anti-version of that, right? Because they have utopia for all these years, and then all of a sudden now, they're saying that dark days are coming ahead, and it's this big elephant in the room and this big secret, and they're saying that it can't last, this utopia can't last forever. The overlord then comes out and tells them that they've enjoyed many decades of peace and prosperity, but now that it's time to sacrifice their children. And then you see like this rapture type event where all the children start floating up into the air. And he hopes, and he says that that's as surely as the sun rose, it now must set on humankind and no more babies would be born. So here seems to be the final deception of this film, that the overmind, which is like the God character, that all of this was part of the plan. That good and evil have to exist in order for man to evolve. Okay? That is the deception in this series. Nothing could be further from the truth. Evil is not necessary for man to evolve. But that is a new and common thinking out there. It is the deception. Okay? God will eradicate evil from the entire universe. The only reason why evil exists is because of the serpent. That is the only reason. Because God loves us so much, he gives all of us a free choice. And the serpent decided to challenge God. So this little girl, Jennifer, becomes the collective consciousness. She represents the mixing of the seed, the serpent seed with the human race, as her mother is impregnated by the serpent. And then she raises in consciousness and starts collecting all the consciousnesses of the children. All of that is brought together, and Cruellen, which is the villain, the overlord, the, the leader, infers that the children are the future and they will create a new world, and that this all this is part of an evolution, and that his role is necessary, and they've done this with other worlds, and so on and so forth. And this is the deception. Now, all of the children from around the world start chanting Jennifer's name. And so what I did was, since we're talking about the Antichrist, I took the word Jennifer and I played it backwards. What you're going to hear is a bit spooky. Jennifer. And when you take this and you reverse it and slow it down by 30%, this is what it says. You're finished. You're finished. You're finished. You're finished. Her finish. Take care and be safe, you guys.